nobody can excel in life constantly, correctly to the end of their life without operating under what of the hopeful nervous. Service to God is the advantage for the disadvantage. We give you thanks. Shall we give him praise this, this hour and say, Father, we thank you. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We bless your name, O Lord, once again for tonight. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, if two or three God gather in my name, in their midst will I be. Thank you for your presence in our midst. The Bible says, in the presence of the Lord, that is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasure forevermore. Lord, your presence is here. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, Lord. The Holy Spirit, you will take charge tonight. You yourself will teach us yourself. You will help us to pray in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, as he taught them, the power of God was available to heal them. Let's ask the Father tonight, let your power be available in the name of Jesus. We are teaching with power, with the authority of the word of God. Oh Lord, with the authority in the name of Jesus. We are not teaching, oh Lord, the errors. We are not teaching minds blowing. Just teaching the word of God. Let your word, oh Lord, reach out to us today in the name of Jesus. Let's ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help us tonight. Our great intercessor, our power releaser. Please this time, oh Lord, breathe upon us tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord, the Bible says we do not know how to pray. Oh, Lord, but when the Spirit of truth comes, it will help us. It will intercede on our behalf. It will intercede alongside with us with the agony that cannot be hotter. Holy Spirit, tonight we pray that you will take charge of today's service. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Bible says, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Today, I praying, and that one word that came to me, that you are in service. Just like you take your car to, to a service, I mean, to the mechanic, to help you to service. And it's place of service, they look at every part of the system. Sometimes they say, oh, this thing needs to be reformed. This hole needs to change. This all of this break need to what to be adjusted. Let's ask the Father. I'm here in your presence. Any areas of my life that need service tonight, please service it in the name of Jesus. Any areas of my life that need divine touch, give me tonight. Any areas of my home that need divine touch, service me tonight. I am here in your presence. I'm available for you. I present my body as a living sacrifice unto you. Lord Jesus, Lord, tonight, give me a divine touch in the name of Jesus. Service every area of my life in the name of Jesus. Make me faith. Make me strengthen in the name of Jesus, Lord. Supply strength to me. Supply strength to me. Supply strength to me in the name of Jesus, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want us to pray one more prayer and say, in the race of life, you will not be weary. You will not be weary. Yeah, prophesy to somebody, help me here, prophesy. You will not be weary. In the race of life, you will not run out of well. You will not run in vain. Let me tell your neighbor, you will not run in vain. How we not run in vain? This journey, this race of life, I will not run in vain. Praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Please, let's be seated. God bless us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. We have been considering this uh, topic for a while. Um, by the grace of God, Bro Paul said, I put my body under subjections that after I preach to others, I myself will not be a castaway. He said that I will not what? I will not run. I say I'm not running as one beating shadows. 
gospel, but I run that I may obtain. In the course of these studies, we have looked at many outlines, particularly we look at uh, running with right intentions. And we look at what that this journey that God has called us into, you must run, what, we must run with what? With purpose. Praise God. You must not run and they ask you, where are you running? You say, I don't know what, that, what is chasing me. Praise God. <laughs> Somebody, okay, I don't know where that came now. Okay. Uh, can I take in, says somebody that one pastor, uh, he said, oh, he greeted him, he said, oh, pastor, how is it going? He said, ah, he said, I got the dev dev devil running. He said, oh, he said, oh, great, that is a good one. He said, no, it's the question is that I'm the one running, he's the one chasing me. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In this day, in this race of life, oh Lord, we will pursue, we will not be pursuing Jesus' name. So we must run with what? With right purpose. Another one is that we must run with, with moderations. Moderation means we must run with what? With patience. And the Bible says, through patience, oh Lord, we will obtain the promise. I pray God will guide us in Jesus' name. We must also run with the right goal. We must run with the right goal. That what? We must know that what? Heaven is what? Is our ultimate aim and plan. We must also run with the right outlines. We must know that this journey is a daily walk. Praise God. That yesterday power will not sustain you for today. Rest, I mean, yesterday strength will not carry us for today. Every day of our life, we have to come back and receive from Him. We must always run with what? With a clear outline, daily counting on the promise and the help of God. And we must run without blemish. Praise God. We must run with holiness. Praise the Lord. But we say, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. We must run with what? Without blemish. We must run without blemish. And by the grace of God, we say, considering we must run with power. Say, run with power. Run with power. If we still have some outline for those that are coming today, for if you are not, we are running with power. Say, run with power. I've ever seen when we watch some athletes and on their road, maybe they are doing this Olympic thing. And some people will just run out of gas and they will collapse and they will fall. No matter how many distance they have covered, the moment they are out of gas, they are out of the race. You will not be out of the race. You will not be out of the race. You will not be out of the race in Jesus' name. You will not be knocked off in the name of Jesus. We will run to the end and win the goal in Jesus' name. We stated that running the race with power... It has to do with, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 26 to 27. And we started by looking at prayer as a generation, I mean, generational foundations. We are looking at the place of prayers as a place of power. Say the place of prayers is a place of power. The place, the place of prayer is a place of power. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, about the book of Isaiah, or the one said, those that wait upon the Lord, we will, it will renew our strength. We will mount up with wing as eagles. We will run, we will not be tired. And we even walk, even when we, 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 we walk, we will not be walk, we will not be weary. I hope I didn't take it to miss it up. Praise God. As you run this race, you will not be weary in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, we look at it as a generational foundations, and we look at uh, that people of the old, like Abraham, all of them started, they passed on the baton to us to run with prayer. We also look at prayer as the power to rescue present and future generations. That with prayer, through prayer, you can rescue what? Both the world, the present and future generations. A blessing of the Lord upon Abraham make God to swear over him and say what? I know that Abraham will, what? will take care of his children. He interceded to a point that what? He rescued his, his uh, his navy lost from what? from the danger, from the trouble that was ahead, and God helped him. And we also look at prayer as laying the foundation for generations to come. And, Lord, and this has to be done by practice. We looked at it last week. My wife looked at it like the seven element of prayers from that. And the devil say, devil has the right to penetrate any life that is not prayerful. And we look at what? That we should create time for personal order. We create time also for family altar. Maybe we look take some prayer. And we look at it specifically last week that prayer is a war. Praise God. Prayer is war. Is a warfare. Prayer is warfare. 
prayer is a warfare, serious warfare. It's a warfare against the enemy. Prayer as a protection from the enemy. The book of uh, Psalm 91 from verse 1 to 16 will learn that word. Prayer is a protection from the enemy. But when you read Bible, that Bible verse, it's telling us that word. We engage in prayer and the word to protect ourselves. We also look at prayer as offensive weapon. It's an offensive weapon against the kingdom of darkness. When you pray, one of the things that what, after you have thanked God, after you have all this one, we must do strategic prayers. That is kind of prayer that what, that is very offensive. Praise the Lord, offensive prayer. Don't always pray defensive prayer. We have to pray also what? Offensive prayers. And the best form of protection, I mean, the first one of defense is what? It's attack. It's attack. Praise. It's offense. Oh, don't wait until the devil hits you before you hit them. Praise God. It might be too late. Praise God. Uh, Israel lands in a hard way. Praise God. So prayer as a weapon for pulling down stronghold of darkness. Hold on. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. Yeah, but they are strong in pulling down stronghold of darkness. So if you are going to put something that is a call a stronghold, then that means to, to must be what? Must be strong. Is that not true? You have to be strong to pull down a stronghold. Say, you have to be strong to pull down a stronghold. Or your prayer have to be strong <laughs> to pull down a stronghold. So, amen. So, it's a warfare. It's a warfare. Serious warfare. It's a spiritual warfare. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18, make us to know that for we wrestle not against what? Against flesh and blood. But against principality, against power, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So that means, oh Lord, if you are wrestling, that means there must be a what? A place of what? A place of warfare. So that is why the devil will do anything to launch attack against our prayer. Sometimes we attack our spirit, we attack our mind, and we attack the environment. It will make it easy for you that what? Your spirit is not in tune with God. It will make sure that sometimes your prayer does not reach ceiling. Praise God. Because you are not flowing. When the Holy Spirit takes charge in place of prayer, oh Lord, it becomes very easy to pray. Prayer engage angelic assistance in battle. Is that not true? We can call angelic assistance. In Daniel chapter 10, we saw well Daniel, by the grace of God, he was able to release angelic, angelic assistance to help him because what? The warfare was intense and they are blocking his prayer. Everyone whose prayer has been blocked by the mercy of the Lord, oh Lord, we pray this today, there shall be liberation in the name of Jesus. There shall be liberation in the name of Jesus. Prayer bring deliverance. And devil, we all know that the Bible says, well, if you are going to go to a strong man's house, you must well, you must prepare for battle. You have to first of all bind a strong man, then you're able to grow, release these captives. So prayer is a war, is a war. And that's why it's very difficult to pray. Prayer as a weapon of war, resisting the war, the devil. We can resist the devil in the place of prayer. That is part of the work. I wish we can have time to deal with this. Prayer for divine strategies in battles. When we want to go for battles, like the case of Second Samuel chapter 5, we saw that David inquired of the Lord. After he, the enemy had already raided his house, he said, what should I do of the Lord? What should I? That's prayer, strategic prayer. Actually, what we want to do tonight, we are looking at point 5 from here, prayer as Christian life foundations, and uh, we are looking at strategic prayers. I call it strategic prayers. Say strategic prayers. And today, our text is actually taken from the book of Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. What is strategic prayer? Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9 from verse 8 to 12. Acts chapter 9 from verse 8 to 12. Uh, if you are there, we can read. What is strategic prayer? What makes it strategic? And why is it when something is strategic? What does it mean? Who wants to help us? Praise God. I mean, praise God. Before we read. Okay, read yes, ma'am. Then Saul arose from the ground, mm -hmm. and when his eyes were opened, mm -hmm. he saw no one. Mm -hmm. But they led him by the hand and mm -hmm. brought him to Damascus. Mm -hmm. Verse Conti 9. Continue and to it 15, was 12, three yes, days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Mm -hmm. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named mm -hmm. Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise, go to the street called Street, and inquire at the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus, 
for behold, he's praying. <clears throat> and in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's so much to, to, to learn from this encounter today. I hope Holy Spirit will help us in Jesus' name. I believe you will help us. So what's the first testimony about Paul here? We all know the story. We know the story was the story of the encounter of uh, a man called Saul, who finally became what? Paul, the apostle. On his way to Damascus, Jesus appeared to him on the road. And this was a man that was what? Was enemy of what? Of, of Christ. <laughs> he, was, he made up his mind and said, oh, I'm not just going to persecute them. I'm going to make sure that what? I bring them to judgment. He did everything he could to make sure that what? As many as possible, he killed. He is a man that we say he has many people's blood in his hands. And on his way to Damascus, he, was, he wanted to go and arrest some apostles. And all of a sudden, there was a man called Ananias. Oh Lord, he was there, he was praying too. And he was praying on the way. God arrested a man that was coming to arrest him. Praise God. The Lord will arrest you, arrest her. The Lord will arrest you, arrest her. With prayer, we can arrest her, what? Our arrest her. He didn't know that the man was He was praying what? in this place. And the person that was coming to arrest him, God has already arrested him on the way. Praise God. He met with God. And all of a sudden, uh, Saul met with with. with the fire of God with Holy Spirit, the lighting of, from, the whole, from Jesus. And, but the question we are, we are going here is that the first thing that, what, that Saul is, I mean, returned to do when he heard the condition that Jesus Christ said, oh, I've chosen you. Arise and go to the city and you will be told what you must do. Immediately he went. But the one thing that Paul started, I mean, started to do for the, three, the next three days, it was fasting. Praise God. It was what? Fasting. He didn't eat anything. He didn't eat anything. Number one, he was, he was a man that was like here, from here. God brought him down, praise God. He came down from his high horse. He was on the ground. The first thing we realized that was, oh, this Jesus is actually real. This, this revelation is what? It's true. I saw him with my own eyes. And he, was not, he, didn't, he didn't embrace Jesus in the physical, but he embraced what? The glorified Jesus. There is no one that ever not, have ever seen revelation of the risen Christ that will not be changed. Praise God. There is no one. The best way, when you see the Muslim community, all this, one of the way God is evangelizing them seriously, you will see them giving different kind of testimony of Jesus appearing to them. There is no one that will see a glorified Jesus that will ever doubt him again. Praise God. Because when he appears to you, he appears to you in what? In his glory. You, dare not, you don't have a say again. You see your God. Praise God. So, and when you have encounter with God, who, are, who is man? Praise God. Every man, what? We just subject. So, and this is the kind of encounter that, I mean, that brought Saul to Christ. I pray, is anyone running away from God, antagonizing God? May the Lord Jesus himself, the risen Savior, may he appear to them in the name of Jesus. May eventually you have someone who have not been saved. The prayer is, Lord, let them have encounter what? With risen Jesus. Who said, Jesus, make yourself known to them. Once they see risen Jesus, that is enough for them. You don't need to preach to them again. That's set to their case. But something happened here, which is foundation for what we are doing. We are looking at prayers as a what? As a life foundation that we can look at. Our lesson, strategic prayer. The Bible says, Paul started, he said, oh, if I see this kind of person, I want to tap into the power that he has. And he began to pray. For three days. I want us to see the effect of this Paul's prayer. We want to see that the testimony of the law, what was the first thing that the law said concerning Paul? Saul here. When he was introducing, was telling Ananias, he said what? 
When you read verse 11, verse 11, let's read it. Arise, go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of what? Of Judas. For one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he what? He's praying. Hey, the, Saul retired, well, retired, began to pray to a point that God has to go and send some word, Ananiah. This is what they call strategic prayer. A prayer you pray that will say, Lord, I want result. I want direction. I want answer. I want intervention. He relied on this until God had to send somebody that what? That there's somebody praying somewhere. Imagine how did God, it was God that was what? Narrating where he was. The house he was. Do you know that God knows your house? Praise God. <laughs> he knows the street that Saul was praying from. God, let so God oh, thank you. He knows the owner of the house. So if you are praying in another person's house, God knows it's not your house. Praise God. <laughs> he was praying. God said, that was Judah's house. But what? Ananias is, I mean, Saul is there praying. Just you go there. You are going to find him. In all of them in the house, God did not send the well, Ananias to any other person. But who did he send the, well, the, the Ananias to? To who? The Saul, what? Who was praying? Praise God. Answer always look for where the prayer is coming from. Praise God. Where will the answer go? To the person that is praying. He, got, he went to work. He said, there is a man praying here. And he, what? he went straight to work. So the, test, the first testimony that Saul ever had in his walk with God is that what? He prays. The first testimony. So the question is that he, because he wanted a solution. He was praised. <laughs> he was blind. He pray until God sent someone to restore his sight. I want us to see this. This strategic prayer. Intentional prayer. Prayer that I aim at getting a result. Prayer that said, Lord, over this matter, I need you to talk or to heal. I just need something that I can lay hold on. It's different from just praying in the morning, Lord, go with me today. Lord, just solve our problem. But you notice this is a problem. How with this? I want, I want God to speak over this matter. This is a prayer. This is one thing we are lacking now. You see people going through stuff for years. You ask them, what is God saying? They said they don't know. Why won't you know? Praise God. I want us to, why won't you know? If you actually been praying strategic prayer, God is not deaf. He's not dumb. He's not blind. He can see. If you are really praying, strategic prayer over that matter, God will not, even if God will not come, he will send an angel. If he cannot send an angel, he will send somebody to you. He will definitely give you a word to hold on to. What I'm always asking people that, can you tell me what God is saying? Praise God. I don't care if the answer has not come. But you know, God said, the answer is coming. God said this is coming. Then it shows that you are praying. Okay, praise God. This kind of prayer is a prayer they call two, is the right way of prayer. Two-way communication. Is that not true? If all you are sending to heaven is just bombarding heaven, but you are not hearing from heaven, then something is happening. It's happening. That is not wrong. That's not right. Strategic prayer is a prayer that what? That is that when I score, somebody on the other side must answer. I don't know. I don't care what you want to tell me. I just know that God, you, I, because that means I already established what a connection. Imagine. I want us to look at this. I want us to dissect this very well. He was not praying to Ananiah, but his answer was with Ananiah. The anointing that we make what that we what that we make him see was with Ananiah. But who did he pray to? He prayed to God. And God now went to her and said, Ananiah, the answer to this guy is in your hand. You go there. So if we are actually pray, what are the results that we should expect from this encounter? You notice, I want us, there's something, let me just open it very well. Ananiah didn't want to go there. 
He was hugging with what? The angel that was talking with him. But God said, this guy will not stop praying. You are here. He said, he will not stop praying. So God has no choice. He has what? He has touched my heart. You, you have, to, God have to compel Ananiah to go and what? To go and look for Saul. I don't know. Am I making sense? He, he was not, he wasn't willing to say, let's go and rescue him. No. He was even afraid of him, but God said no. And it was because of this kind of conviction that make Ananiah to take Saul to his house. Say what? Even when everybody say, no, this guy is not safe. He said, ah, this one is safe. <laughs> he's, he's very safe. <laughs> because even me, I didn't accept him as somebody who was safe. But the kind of hand that compelled him to go and rescue, this is, what can we say about strategic prayer here? I want us, because this is very important. What can we say? I wonder also, uh, what, what lesson do, can we draw from this, this encounter? How do I say I have prayed strategically? What should be the result if I actually pray? That should be an answer. Praise God. It may not even be what you want to hear. But the question that I want there must be an open heaven. There must be something that God will tell you. There must, this is what makes us different from ritual. Praise God. I don't know. It's, it's ritualist. That we are, just, we are not just doing... Uh, we know that we are dealing with a God that is real, that is alive. And if you died his number through prayer, he should answer you. He should drop something. So the question I'm asking, why, why are we finding it difficult to, to engage like this? Why, why do people say they don't? I don't know. What is happening here? I don't know. What is happening? I don't know. Why are, we, why are we like that? Daddy. Does anybody want to give us a personal testimony over something like this? When you pray, just because this is so that Proventure, they will not say it's just in the Bible. Praise God. It's not pastor's testimony. Is anybody here that want to tell us something? How when you pray strategic and God gave you something that you hold on to and you finally manifest. Good work in you. We complete it mm. even to the day, the time of Jesus Christ. So that was what that's that is it. Put in my, my heart, and that's what we did during the evaluation. And God has he hasn't finished his work yet. Amen. Amen. Continue. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Daddy. Directions. Pastor Boson, give us one. Let me give my mic to start. Pastor Ambulu. Um, sorry, Pastor Kemi at behind. Let me give one to Edelawa. I want to hear because this is this is the essence of our prayer. This is the essence of our work. If prayer is just about, we are just throwing uh, pray, pray. I didn't even know Philippians was in the back. Uh, Ephesians? No, Philippians. Yeah. Imagine that. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. That is him. The Holy Spirit just dropped that word. That's how he guides us. Okay, Pastor Boson. Because this is, if we are not having this experience, that means we are not breaking through in place of prayer when it comes to strategic prayers. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There are so many examples. Pastor Kemi, don't run away. Give her mic. So many examples, uh, but I can relate with one that relates with prayer is a conversation, right? So, at one time, um, I wasn't even praying in the place of work for elevation because I had been elevated the year before. 
and I had concerns for my team members. And I wanted them, I recommended them for promotion. And um, I remember one night, you know, I dreamt and God said, you are going to be elevated. And I said, why? But my team are the ones I have recommended. He said, because I'm God. And um, not quite some, I can't remember how, much, how long later, it so happened that the recommendation I made, while we were considering it, the person I recommended insulted someone else who mm. happened to be an expatriate. Imagine that. And the CEO came to meet me. He said, you see, the person you recommended for promotion is causing trouble downstairs there now. Mm. You are not, he's not getting recommended. And he said, I'm recommending you. I said, ah, my team. He said, well, you choose between you and your team. Your team member is not getting it. So if you don't want it, it's wow. This is God. This is who we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to dwell with the issue of Paul, the Ananias, and Paul's encounter with God. Because when Paul was going to Damascus, uh, the Holy Spirit had an encounter with him. My question about that if Paul had not been blind, would Paul have been praying for those same days? Let's say the encounter was just for him when the light shined on him. And then from there, maybe he passed to cross his tongues and all that. Would they have gone on those three days fasting and praying? That's my question. Now back to my own area of um, special prayers. I remember that I've shared this uh, question before that I was coming to the United States is divine, is by divine grace. I never went to airport one time or been to America and back in before. But when Please use your mic, sir. Sorry? Use your mic. Hear me. Okay. Hello. Praise the Lord. So when it was time for God to do his work, got to the embassy and they said, I have been to the embassy before because all my details were before the <laughs> officials, my date of birth, my full name, the way my names are arranged, where I was born, and all that. They had all those things before. They said, no, you have been granted visa, you have been to the United States before. And it was tough because one, I've never been to the embassy. <laughs> the highest I flew was from uh, Lagos to Karekano as communication officer for IIT. I've never been outside, America, uh, outside uh, Nigeria. But here was I, I've been told that I've been to the United States before because somebody actually stole my, my identity. I applied for Nigeria passport. The passport came out. When I got to embassy uh, to immigration to collect the passport, they couldn't find my passport. So you know how things are done back home in Africa, and I forgot about it. So apparently the passport came out and they sold it for somebody, and that somebody used it to travel and wherever he was in the United States. So it was barely my identity in the United States. How did they now distinguish who is who? They have to take the, my ten fingers, do all the uh, fingerprints. That was the intervention of God because at that point in time, your office people already know that you are no longer part of them. You are already selling all your property, all no, these things, to, to arrange how you fly, how you take the family along, and boom, here you are. At the last minute, they deny you what you needed. At that point in time, all you can only, only do is just God, I commit everything unto your hand. So I also believe that God intervened at that point in time. Otherwise, you might say I'll be stuck in Nigeria because there are so many people who got to that point that they say, oh, your application was more than one. 
and they denied their visa, irrespective of whether they have sold whatever they had before or not. So that's the experience that I want to share. But the question that I asked about Paul, that if he had not been blind, would I be praying for those three gates? I, I believe he probably would have been praying um, because we're told he's a man that is fervent, but channeling his energy towards the wrong thing. The persecution that he was going after Christians is because he believed he was actually doing it for God. Unfortunately, it was not the right way. So I believe he probably would have been praying, maybe not as fervent, but clearly he was a man who is with passion. So praise God. There's something here that I don't know why I'm very, very particular about this. It's about the burden. You don't pray until you have a burden. This strategic prayer does not come until you have a pain. Imagine Jesus. He wanted to they wanted to crucify him. He knew that he would be crucified. He took three people that were very close to him and said, my soul is so troubled to the point of death. Please come and pray with me. And he took, took them to a place whereby they would be able to pray. But what were they doing when they get there? Why were they sleeping? They are not the one affected. If they have been told that tomorrow they will cut their life, I mean, their head off. If they have seen him, they will not, there is no, sleep we what? Sleep we go. The only way, the only reason why they are what, you can easily, is that what, you don't see the pain. If people are actually in pain, we pray. If you actually see body, we pray. If challenge is threatening our life, we pray. You see, you see some people that were, when they came here, before, when they are coming here, they will pray, they will go out to all the mountains. The moment, they would, well, then they just come here. Ah, all the things we are praying for is here. We can go to McDonald's and buy this one. That's, that's no problem. I can work and make little money. All of a sudden, all their prayer points just come back to zero because they no longer have the body. The only thing that make them to pray before are those, those what they will eat. Challenges. So, until you actually, so, when we talk of prayer, in this aspect, it's, it has to come with body. If you, are not, if you are not compassionate, if you don't have a body over a matter, you don't pray about it. And the level at which you pray over a matter, the kind of sacrifice, the thing, the time on what, how special that thing is to you. If God forbid, if anybody is told here that say, tomorrow, there's a sickness, there's somebody, God forbid, in somebody's, and they said tomorrow, he will die. Like, do we, like as a case, you will see that, they will say, Pastor, give me the key of the, of, the, of the church. I'm ready, just lock me in. I'm not ready to go. They will not sleep. They will spend all night, they say, on this altar, Jesus, it's me and you. You must settle my case. The reason why we don't praise the world, most of the time, they will make it, they will give us alternative. Life gives us alternative to you. Instead of holding God and saying, God, you can do this, we, because we see a way out. A good example. If you, in this country, if you know that word, you don't have any other option. Except God solve your problem. People will pray. If they know that there's no other problem, that's if I, if, if I settle with God, God will settle this man. But since because they already told you, even if God doesn't do it, a uh, uh, lawyer can do this one. Uh, this person can help you do this one. You can get before you know it. That this that thing that will have that will have made us to to hold the hands of God, we no longer there. This is the problem. And any time, so the if we see the pain, if we see we we pray, we will desire of God to answer us. So are we relaxed? It's because we are not seeing feeling it. If you are employed by somebody and your pay is 
You know, come rain, come shine. Every two weeks, you're going to get paid. Then the tendency is that you're not going to be preparing that much because, you know, Just feel like I put in the hours, so somebody is going to pay me. But if you are, if your own business, you're going to have to pray all the time because you never know you're where, expecting where your, your next contract, your next uh, uh, funding is going to come. So that, that's why God values uh, people, uh, farmers because farmers have to depend on God a lot because they, you need the sun. If the sun doesn't come up, it's a big problem. When it's supposed to be sunny, mm -hmm. if it doesn't come, it's big problem. If it doesn't rain when it's supposed to rain, it's yes. a big problem. Mm -hmm. If it rains too much, it's a big problem. Mm -hmm. So a farmer is always constantly praying and asking God to, to turn things around. Thank you, Same Dad. thing with people like us who own business. Amen. Thank you, Daddy. We noticed that Saul saw vision. Thank you. It, it was after he saw the vision that he started praying. He saw the vision of the man coming. So that means seeing vision. I put something. A vision from the Lord is like a seed that could die without the water of prayer. The fact that God has shown you something, you have to pray it to a sister. Don't forget what Paul told Timothy. He said, fan into flame. He said, pray. What? Contest endlessly according to the prophecy that was on over your life. Does that make sense? That the prophecy is already out. You have to pray until that prophecy is fulfilled. So the fact that God said, this is what I will do for you. If you don't pray to a system, it's possible that that thing may take years to come. It will not come. What, what that? He said, content for what? He said, according to the prophecy. I don't know how big is what God has said concerning us. That should determine what you want to pray over that. It's, if you see what is coming, there's, ah, God, you want to do this with me? Then it becomes a life and says, no, uh, this thing must be battered. Praise the Lord. So it we have to contend. We pray in proportion to the vision we have seen. Does that mean? You, you don't pray until one you see. If you, if you see what lies ahead of you, then you pray in proportion to that. You pray according to the body that, what, that comes as of what? Probably pains that you are going through or challenges you are going through or situation that you are going through. If you see that, then you pray over it. And you have to pray until you what? Until there is a word from God. On that is an answer from God. If you have not prayed that prayer, then your prayer is not what? You have not prayed. Praise God. We have not what? We have not prayed. You have to pray until you receive. And it pains me. If anybody ever walked with you, you notice that there's something. I see people want to do this. They want to do that. They, before you know it, they take some major step in their life. Major step. You ask them, why are you doing this? I just, somebody else is doing it. Uh, is, is the one working. You, are, you just see you're doing it because other people are doing it. Our life is not like that. The Bible says the step of the righteous are what? Are ordered by the Lord. So the fact that I've seen a vision does not mean that vision will come to pass if I fail not to work, not to pray it out. Geo told us and said, thank God for prophecy of our redeem. But many prayers went into it to bat it. Thank God for the covenant. But some people pay the price, every price, to Lord, until God. I read from the libels of people that know the founder of this church that the Baba will not sleep in his bed during the night. He what? He will stay by the wall, by the window, by the door side, and be praying. Praise God. And now with that, God was able to open what things. So this there is a pray that is what there is no there is no shortcut. Praise God. <laughs> Why? Because the Bible said the earnest prayers of the righteous have avail it much. Mommy, you want to say something? I was just going to uh, share my, well, two things. Uh, like you uh, were just giving testimony. I too, you know, sometimes you pray and uh, God answers the way you want it. Sometimes God's answer, it might be different. 
uh, two occasions, um, like having burden, I'm someone who's, who is like that. I met a friend that we've known each other. Everybody, actually, she's been here to this church before. Then I, when I met her, she was like, oh, how many children do you have now? She was like, ah, oh, it's still only their first child. I was like, ah, we must pray. <laughs> I, I said it with confidence. We must pray. And behold, we prayed, and God answered her in a few years. Please. Another friend, I was really, had a body when I met them, they have a child who has a challenge. And I was like praying. I actually fasted for this child I prayed. But what stopped me? The answer I got was that I said death. I was like, I don't want their child to die. Maybe that would, I don't know. So I just, I'm like, God, I don't want their child to die. So, you know, somebody is alive. Uh, there's still hope. And uh, I, I don't know if I shared it with them too, but that was the answer I got, and I stopped praying. I stopped my fast. Amen. Praise God. You see, praise God. Sometimes, praise God. In my, let me see, let, let's read some things written here because I will do some. You could receive a vision about your ministry, marriage, business, any aspect of your Christian life, and still not experience this fulfillment for lack of prayers. In marriage, some people run in vain when they receive a genuine vision of who to marry and never pray for its fulfillment. Some Christian habits, I mean, habits sharing their word, that God's giving vision with men. That's their habit. You share with men, but you never share with God. We have to learn this. This is very hard to deal with. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Prayer is the power to run a vision. Jose was telling when you saw a man that prayed for 30 days and night without stopping. Hello, help us in Jesus' name. We went tonight. You see, I wanted to when he has to round up. Thank God for prayer. Thank God for vision. Thank God for what he wants to do. I tell people, me, I, I've been running away from being pastor. But one of the things that kept me being a pastor today is because of the way God called me. He did not call me by just looking at the mirror. Praise God. <laughs> he called me with so much of a, a vision, that kind of vision that, we, that you can never forget. And was, I was body. I was body. I just, not, I just don't like the spiritual atmosphere of the land. And I was just fasting on my own. Just fasting. Just thinking, Lord, how can this land be the everybody? I just, too many this thing around. I just said, Lord, is there not going to be a church that, I mean, I, no, I was, is there not going to be, what will you do? And I was burdened about something. And before I knew what was happening, early in the morning, early in the morning like this, I wanted to do my, it was not even in my house, in Daniel O'Connor's house. I was taking care of a, uh, somebody who was MRDD. In that house, I was doing my quiet time in the morning, around five o'clock. And God opened the word, the vision of heaven. I watched the first episode. He showed me different people's vision. I mean, a beast, I mean, farm in the land. That one disappeared. I looked like this. What is going on? Before I knew what was happening, the second one started. That's when I know God knows how to run episode of movie. Praise God. <laughs> it's not only weird. Three episodes in a row. I was, I dread the place as if, as if I was like, uh, as if the angel, uh, because I just knew that somebody around me, who is like, you will, when you watch one, you, will, you come back to your consciousness. You say, what is this? Before you know it, as if he give you a failure on five again. Sleep. I mean, uh, lose your, your consciousness. Open vision. Give you another one. You finish that one. Say, Boop. you are back again. What is going on here? He gave you another one. You can't see that kind of person, I mean, that kind of vision and know that your, your life is already, there's nothing you can do. Is it that you surrender? If somebody that can make you see that, like, and that can even do anything to you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This strategic prayer, but it comes with body. Right body. Praise the Lord. Right intention. Please, let's, not, let's stop just looking at this to God. Let's knock deep. That's the question. Let's knock deep. 
particularly when it comes to strategy. And God, may God answer us in Jesus' name. May by the time we come next week, may everyone have testimony that God, you have actually, this I've been waiting for. I receive an answer in Jesus' name. God bless us in Jesus' name.